Uh, okay, one last thing I want to talk about is uh, this Pierce Morgan video. So it's super long. It's like 40 minutes. So we're obviously not going to watch the whole thing. But the title is interesting to me. There will be a different Democrat candidate come election day. Um, so this is about Biden following the virality of videos of him seemingly freezing. Uh, there was the one video in particular of him on stage with Jimmy Kimmel and Obama and just kind of like staring off blankly and Obama kind of grabs his hand in like a very, come on, grandpa, let's go type of gesture. Uh, you know, there's that. There's the other thing where he's just staring off as people are dancing. Regardless, I don't know who said this, but I, I don't I, I don't agree with this. I think this is wishful thinking. Um, it might just be clickbait. Maybe nobody said it, but there's no way that they're going to replace him. They should replace him, and I would be happy if they did replace him. I want to be proven wrong because I think that he's just – he's headed for defeat because he won't change. He won't stop supporting a genocide. But I don't think that this is going to happen. But the uh, debate participants are Jen Uger, Tommy Loren, and Brian Tyler Cohen. So I'm curious. I haven't seen this yet. I, like, skimmed through the beginning but didn't get to watch it. And I'm curious to hear what they have to say. And whoever says uh, that he will be replaced, either Pierce Morgan or Tommy Loren, like, what's the argument? Because that's not going to happen. There's no way that's going to happen. Uh, I would, l again, love to be proven wrong. Not going to happen, though. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, okay, so let's get to Jenk first and see what he has to say. We've talked about this before. This has to be a concern, doesn't it, for America? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually very depressing on a l number of fronts, including that my side, the Democrats, have now become like MAGA. Um, sorry, Brian, I love you. I think you're a great guy, super smart. You lay out your case as well as anybody can lay it out. But we do all have eyes and ears. And, and the Democrats are starting to look like MAGA, denying that, you know, that MAGA says, oh, Trump won the election in 2020. You have to be a lunatic to believe that. But if you think that uh, Joe Biden is a secret dynamo behind the scenes as the Democrats claim, you got to be borderline lunatic to believe that. No, the guy is in terrible, terrible shape. And if he has dementia... I, I think that this is one thing that Democrats do have to just concede. Like we just watched the clip of Harry Sisson on CNN. That's the, you know, Gen Z TikTok influencer. That's like Biden is doing so fine. Like I, interview him, I interviewed him and he's like super sharp. I mean, come on. It feels like you're gaslighting us, like you're pissing on our legs and telling us it's raining. To say that he's as sharp as he was, even in 2020, would be quite the fucking stretch. Of course, he's in cognitive decline. He's a thousand years old. Um, and I don't think that the counter argument of but Trump is bad as well is persuasive to people. You can make that case. I would agree with you. I think Trump is also in cognitive decline. They're both in cognitive decline. They both have memory issues, but it's a bigger problem for Biden right now, uh, in part because it's one of his biggest issues that's like easy. Like, you know, the press doesn't really want to dive into the genocide he's supporting. Democrats don't want to really rationalize or not rationalize. They don't want to reckon with that, right? So they're just trying to be like, oh my God, people just hate him because of his age. And, you know, he's really sharp. He just fucking, he wrote his name. Um, but it, it just comes off as disingenuous. So I do agree with Jen here that you, you kind of do have to admit that. To be fair to Brian Tyler Cohen, I don't know what he said earlier. Um, but, you know, I, I, I agree with the point that Jen's, Jen's making here that, you know, Biden, he's not as sharp as he used to be. Uh, and that's not like, that's just what happens when you're old. I mean, it's going to happen to everyone. It's It's an inevitability. As rich as you are, you know, Time is a motherfucker, and it's going to come to to get everyone. I mean, again, Trump is also old, but it is a liability for Biden. Uh, I personally don't care about age. I only care insofar as other people care, and it could hurt his chances of defeating Donald Trump, right? Um, so, you know, if you put up somebody that is not giving everybody confidence that they're going to be able to make it through their full term, that's kind of a you problem. That's a Democratic Party problem, right? Sure. Uh, and they get more stubborn. And so what if he digs in and he's like, I don't care. And his mind is actually affected by the ailments that we're seeing with our own eyes. So I, the Democrats have become so authoritarian 
that they're like, oh my God, what if Bernie Sanders wins? What if a progressive wins? Let's all bow our head to the mad king. And that's what he is at this point. So we have two mad kings running. I agree. One's a moron to begin with. Donald Trump's one of the dumbest people who's ever been in political office. And now his brain is True. melting too. He's saying, oh, you do it. look at Joe Biden, he has dementia. My doctor, Ronnie Johnson, he, he told me, I'd... it's Ronnie Jackson, idiot. That was genuinely hilarious, by the way. Like, even when Trump shows signs of cognitive decline, the way he does it is just objectively hilarious in the stupidest way possible. So yeah, Cheng, Cheng, we have let me, two okay, blithering Cheng, morons Cheng, Cheng, and, on that and people point. that are affected by mental ailments okay. running for office. But Cheng, here's it's the a difference. deeply embarrassing moment for America. Here's the difference. And then we have RFK Jr., who is being taken seriously when he actually had a brain worm, literally, right? So you've got... <laughs> You've got two senior citizens, both in cognitive decline, and then you've got a guy who's also very, very old, to be fair. I don't know how old RFK is, but he had a brain worm. So, I mean, America's not sending their best, right? The third-party candidates are always good, but the problem is that we have a shitty two, you know, first-past-the-post two-party system. Uh, I just hate that, like, if you have the last name of Kennedy, um, you can kind of and, and have a lot of money and connections, then you can kind of get your name name out there more than traditional third-party candidates. But RFK is still not going to win. I mean, look at Ross Perot. He got no electoral college votes. Um, it's just the fact of reality. It's going to be Biden or Trump, right? But the options are so bad. RFK is 71 years old. Holy shit. So he's very old as well. God damn. Do we have anyone under the age of 60 who can run? Like, 65, fuck. This is crazy. Like, people just, they don't want to give up power. It, it's got to be a control thing. I don't understand the folks who don't want to retire. Like, Dianne Feinstein literally staying in the Senate until she dies is so insane to me. If I were a hundred millionaire and I married a billionaire, I would retire immediately. Like, I don't know when she became rich like that. But, like, if I won the lottery tomorrow... Peace out. You're never hearing from me again. I'm fucking off forever. So there's something that, I, that I'm that i curious about, like I, that needs to be explored. Why these people refuse to give up power. Why they won't retire. When you're that rich, you could see the fucking world. You can buy a yacht and just sail and sail and sail and sail. Have a private chef. You can do anything. And they're just like, I'm just going to stay in Congress and keep getting richer. You can't take that with you when you die. I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Same with Pelosi. Yeah, it's the same with a lot of them. I, and I've watched a lot of Trump recently. He, he rang me a couple of months ago. We had a long chat. Yeah. Rick Scott is one of the richest senators in D.C. and he's 71 and also wants to be Senate Majority Leader. That's so insane to me. Rick Scott, though, to be fair in his defense, he might be a literal demon, so he might just be able to live forever. Um, so that could that could explain him. I think he's actually a demon, or at least he's possessed by a demon, so he's not going anywhere. He'll be around for thousands of years. Is it an addiction? I mean, I don't know. It could be an addiction where they're addicted to power and clout. Um, I just, I don't understand it. It just, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I could, I could understand not wanting to retire, I guess, if you loved your job a lot. But I mean, a job is a job at the end of the day. It's still, a, even if you have the best job in the world and you're doing your dream job, it's still a job. It's still something that you have to do. And I get that people want to do something that gives them meaning, but there are other things to do than that. I just, I genuinely am perplexed by the refusal of so many politicians to retire. But let's go, let's shift over to a response um, from Brian Tyler Cohen, because I think he's kind of responding to Jenk. It's kind of like a pseudo debate. Uh, I don't think they, like, they don't hate each other. They're clearly cool with each other. But I'm just curious how Brian Tyler Cohen would respond to that. Two incumbent Democrat presidents since the war who both gave up. They, they both resigned before the next election. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was one and Harry S. Truman was the other. Did it for slightly different reasons. But the bottom line was that they, they didn't want to go through with it. And they were persuaded by grandees in the party on both cases that this was the right thing to do for the party and for the country. Why is no one having that conversation with Joe Biden? I mean, you've put up a good defense, but when you have someone like Cheng, who is a Democrat, who's at his absolute wit's end, because he sees through all this stuff, it's just smoke and mirrors. We can all see what we see with our own eyes. Biden can barely move. 
He just shuffles now. Uh, I don't understand most of what comes out of his mouth. It is incredibly sad. So my question is, why is no one at least having that conversation in the party? And secondly, if he does get completely torpedoed at the debate, which I think is highly likely, then who would you also like to see potentially being considered to replace him hypothetically if it comes to it? I just have to comment. It's funny how I'm reminded of this conversation by that op-ed we read earlier from the Washington Post. What's her name? Kathleen something? Where she's like, listen, Biden is super old, so we need to get Kamala out of there. <laughs> Replace Kamala with Hillary because Biden is old. And so if Biden dies, then you have a different old person in power. That's the wildest shit I've ever heard. That's that's kind of besides the point. But I just had to bring that up again because it's that's the weirdest reaction to the Biden old news cycle. I think the reason that he's not he's not being replaced is because on it, in moment after moment whether it's any of these elections he is defying the odds he in 2022 in the midterms democrats won everybody counted joe out every and he won this happened as early as the 2020 election itself i mean this has been a recurring theme where joe biden has consistently defied the odds and so and that was on the backdrop of everybody, you know, from from Tommy to Chank. <laughs> I, I can't actually say that. I don't know whether whether Chank was was writing Joe Biden off back in 2020, but, um, you know, writing him off in terms of uh, in, in terms of him not being. I mean, I wrote him off. I expected him to lose to Trump in 2020, but I, I genuinely believe that he would have lost had it not been for covid. If Trump was mildly competent. I think that he would have sailed to re-election, honestly. Because remember, Biden won by like 45,000 votes across a couple of key swing states. Not a lot. The margins were not very big, right? So I think that Biden, he got lucky and kind of Mr. Magoo'd himself into the White House, right? Lost the first three primaries. And then all the Democrats dropped out when Obama made that phone call and said, you endorse Biden. Uh, and that's how they beat Bernie, got everybody else to drop out and fuck off. Um, and then COVID hit and Trump handled it like an imbecile. So Biden got lucky. So I feel like it's true, like objectively speaking, uh, that Biden has defied the odds, but things have changed and you can't acknowledge the context within which he defied the odds. He got real fucking lucky. You can't say he won a, he he ran a great campaign. You can say he ran a better campaign than Hillary Clinton, but I mean that's a real low bar. Twenty twenty four, you can't say that. I think Hillary twenty sixteen is probably better than Biden twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty four rather. Um, so it's just it's an argument, but I don't find it persuasive because I just don't think you can just you should bank on Biden getting lucky uh, again. I mean, let's cross our fingers, right? But I mean, things have changed. And the young people that he had come out for him in 2020, well, now they're they're staying home specifically because he's supporting a genocide. And that's what Harry Anton of CNN said. He looked at the polls and the people who are not voting for Biden, specifically, they're doing so because they think that he supports Israel too much. And the reason why he's losing overall is because he's losing more vo voters in 2020 than Trump is losing. And that's just such a big problem. So it's it's hard to believe that he's just going to get lucky again. I mean, a lot can change between now and then. So Bar Brian could be 100 percent correct here. But I just think that it's. It's a risk. You're rolling the dice. Right. But with that being said, I think that he's not going to be replaced. So at this point in time, it's Biden or Trump. Right able to 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 win in her, in terms of him not being oh here we go from uh fascist killer trump won the presidency with a three-state threshold of seventy thousand votes the same three states uh threshold biden won with uh with forty thousand votes yeah i mean we're talking really fucking close that's a really thin margin so you don't just need the same people to turn out for biden that turned out in 2020 you need more and he's losing a lot of people that turned out. That's why it's just, mm, it looks so bad. And I'm bracing for the worst, hoping for the best, but bracing for the worst. To uh, uh, um, push forward his agenda, and he's done it successfully. I mean, you know, for for all of the for all of the issues that that Chank has with Biden, I, I think that he would be the last person to to take issue with the fact, you know, with the 
the breadth of his accomplishments while he was in office, whether it was, you know, the American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Gun Safety Bill, the Infrastructure Law, the PACT Act, the CHIPS Act. I think, you know, there is the fact that he keeps doing what everybody says that he can't do, whether it's winning elections, whether it's presiding over a Democratic Party that is winning elections, or whether it's actually pushing his agenda forward or adding uh, again, jobs. Another th- like, this kind of comes back to my point about him being really lucky and Mr. Magooing himself into success. I don't think that, yes, he's presiding over the Democratic Party that's being successful right now. Um, But what happened since he took office? I mean, in 2022, the Supreme Court Court overturned Roe v. Wade and that mobilized a lot of people. That pissed a lot of people off. And I don't think you can credit Biden for, you know, mobilizing people i think people are mobilized because they're angry over the supreme court decision so again he's he's lucky because the circumstances were conducive to success not because of what he did like the strategy of biden in my opinion was irrelevant here the success of biden is irrelevant here uh because i think the things that he did they made a difference uh but the best things that he did expired right? The pandemic era relief, the child tax credit. Like, yes, they were pushing for it to be permanent, but they lost and he didn't put enough pressure on Manchin and Cinema. Um, he should have, right? Um, immediately out of the gate. Yes, he gave us, you know, what was it? Uh, $1,600 or uh, $1,200, but he promised 2000 That pissed off a lot of people in Georgia. When it comes to student loan debt, you know, he promised 10000 to 20000 cancellation and He's canceling some debt, but the vast majority of people aren't seeing their student loans canceled. Now, the Supreme Supreme Court struck that down. Even if he pursued debt cancellation through the Higher Education Act, I think they still would have struck it down. That being said, though, it's just not expansive enough, right? So, but I, I think that it's fair to point to these things and say, yes, these are still positive. They're incremental steps and they should be celebrated. It's positive. But at the same time, I don't think that so many Democrats are winning elections because like, damn, Biden is changing my life. It's because of abortion. It's because they're mobilizing because of that. So like when you look at the uh, Democrats all dropping out and endorsing him in 2020, COVID in 2020, uh, uh, Roe v. Wade getting overturned, 2022, 2023 special elections. Like he keeps getting lucky. And at some point, the luck's going to run out. And I think we're at that point now, right? Unless something different happens between now and November. But that's that's a big if. Doing all of the things that Donald Trump said he would do, whether it's lowering health care costs, adding 15 million jobs, uh, passing an infrastructure bill. He's doing the things that the other guy promised he would do, that energetic guy promised he would do and failed. And yet Joe Biden, sleepy Joe from the campaign, is actually getting them done. Okay, so why that, would he step back? OK, but if he did, just before Can I get to Tommy, answer that? if he did, well, hypothetically, though, bro, just give me a name of somebody who you would be pleased Okay, I don't care because it's not going to happen. I don't care what Tommy Loren has to say. Let's hear what Jenk, how Jenk responds. Brian's earlier question. Uh, by election day, I thought that Joe Biden would crush Donald Trump in 2020. I, he actually won by less than I thought he would because I was reading the polls. And I was right about the, the overall popular vote count. I was surprised at how close the swing states were. Uh, And that's because Joe Biden at that point had a 52% approval rating. And I base things not on my emotions, but on facts and numbers. Do you want to know what his approval rating is now? It's 37%. It's 15 points lower. There is no one who understands one thing about politics who doesn't think, oh, a guy who's 15 points lower than he was has just as good a chance of winning. Remember, he barely won the swing states last time by 44,000 votes. He has no chance of winning. No one in the 30s, an an incumbent in American history, has ever won re-election, ever. It's never been done. And we're to believe that the guy who could barely talk and speak is gonna pull off the most miraculous comeback in American political history. Sorry, but that's just denying reality. And I, unlike apparently every other Democratic establishment person, I don't want to lose to Trump. But apparently they don't mind losing to him at all. Mm. You'd be mental to run a guy at 37% approval. Incumbency is an albatross around his neck, so is his age, etc. So if you don't want to beat Trump, fine. 
uh, you raise your hand and say, I love authoritarian leadership. I bow in front of the democratic establishment. I will never defy you. I bow to you. I bow to you. It doesn't matter if you roll out a mad king with no clothes. I'll say he has clothes and I don't mind losing to Trump. So if you go to who, who should replace him, yeah. first of all, anyone, give me any random democratic <laughs> governor that you pull out of a hat and that person will have 10 point higher. But who's uh, the best? Honestly, that's where I'm at right now, too. I think that basically anyone would be better than Joe Biden in the Democratic Party. Not not, not anyone. There are some exceptions, but like almost any Democrat would have a better chance. Almost any Democrat. That's how bad Biden is doing. And I think that Jenk saying that about the approval rating, it's a devastating point because it's true. It's true. Look. If if Biden does Mr. Magoo himself back into the White House, then this is the luckiest man on the planet because he keeps accidentally winning uh, for some reason. But I feel like it would have to be because of something, right? It, it wouldn't just be random. Um, maybe you can you can credit that to abortion, but like you can't say he's running a good campaign when he's turning off so many voters and his approval rating is at thirty seven percent. That's f mm, that's so fucking bad. Who's the best Joe potential? Biden, and we'll have a great... Okay, Pierce just focuses on the, the most, like, useless questions. Who cares? It doesn't matter who's the... Anyone. Draw a fucking name out of a hat. Who cares? Like, he gets fixated on these weird little niche questions that don't matter. Who cares? Okay, how does Brian Tyler Cohen respond? This is like a... Kind of a, like a... It's not really a debate, but just the disagreement. Uh, okay. Pierce v vs. Jenk on women's rights in sports. Oh, God. They get to... The, Transports. Fuck off, Pierce. Are they really arguing on this? Let's just see. Check just across across the pond here. I would observe that on the Democrat progressive side, they think that it's perfectly okay to just completely destroy women's rights at the altar of limitless gender identity to the extent we have biological oh, please, males Pierce. crushing women. Well, Pierce, I know, please, I'm just Pierce, I'm just saying. I'm you, just saying, you know when, I hear Democrats, affects, when I hear Democrats... That affects... Listen, no, no, Pierce, listen, let me explain. You no, no, no. It, you let me finish. It. Let me that finish. Let point, me finish. Oh, 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 one percent. You guys are obsessed with beating up on trans people. It barely affects anyone in the country. It's a mm. giant distraction. Meanwhile, women are 51% of this country, and you don't mind Republicans taking away their freedom completely and saying that okay. they're... Okay. I was worried when this came up. That's a great fucking response. Jen, good fucking job. I was so worried given his previous rhetoric on this topic. That's how you respond to this. Never, never, never accept the premise. It's a bullshit premise. There's like, what, 250 trans people at the high school and collegiate level nationwide? Stop. Stop. There's some states that with trans sports bans that have no known trans athletes. That's how you respond. Jenk, Great job, God! Oh my God! I'm so excited that he. I was. I was like, Oh no, no, no! <laughs> he did good. He did good here. He has said. He said disagreeable things about trans athletes before. This is a. This is how you answer it, Jank. I'm. I'm proud of you. This is. This is what I want to hear. Their body is a property I just of the find US slightly, government? I find it slightly weird when I hear people on the one hand ferociously wanting to defend women's rights. Oh, sh okay, fuck off. Okay, let's get back to Biden. Do the Democrats have a death wish with Biden? I love how he just takes them on a fucking tangent. Why is Jen cringing here? Let's see. God, Pierce is such a, a fucking moron, I swear to God. With all the baggage Trump brings with him, then... I, I don't know what it says about the Democrat Party. And you, all the polls say the biggest impediment to beating him is Joe Biden. Even two thirds of Democrats think Biden's too old to run again. Your own side. Why do you want to commit this act of self-harm? Pierce, you're, you're writing, you're, you're speaking as if the election is over. I mean, it's, it's still happening. And we it are is. contending to your exact point. With, it, it's, it's not over. I mean, we're contending with somebody who is digging his own grave right now. I mean, you opened up before by talking about how Donald Trump is a convicted felon, how Republicans continue to wage this war against women's reproductive rights. I mean, this is Republicans, you know, they're not, they're not presenting themselves well ahead of this election. And most people, by the way, in this country aren't even paying attention right now. When it comes into focus, when Americans start paying attention, when it's not just low information, uh, when it's not just high information voters who are watching right now, the freaks like all what of us. What do you us. think is going to happen, uh, Brian? What's going to happen on June Brian, the 20th? Everybody June? knows who Biden and Trump are. 
Well, everybody knows who Biden and Trump are. June the 20, idea that they're well, magically well, turning. I, I come back to this. Later, Brian, go, Brian, oh, my God, this. is that Donald Trump? Oh, my God. No, no, oh, so I'm going to vote against it's not the, that they the point don't know is, Brian, Brian, Trump the point is, is we're going to see yeah. on June the 27th. In, in Brian's defense, I think that um, Jenk is absolutely right that, like, yeah, we all know at this point in time it's not about learning who the candidates are. I think that the point that Brian Tyler Cohen is trying to make is that when people see more of Trump, um, maybe they'll be turned off by him because it's like, oh, God, this asshole again. I'm so exhausted by him. When he is out of our minds and not on television as much, which, I mean, in one way, um, you know, the 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 trial kind of helped him in that sense and that, in that like we're hearing about him, but we're not hearing from him. But when you hear the asshole talk, it's like, oh, God, it's like this visceral reaction. I think that's kind of what Brian Tyler Cohen is speaking to, right? Like this, oh, yeah. Do I really want four years of this guy again, um, to be fair? Although, again, everybody kind of knows. Like, sure, like you can you can look back at the Trump years with rose-colored glasses as people are trying to do currently and convince themselves that everything was peachy keen. Um, but, you know, when he starts talking again and saying dumb shit again and gets coverage and he just – he keeps saying stupid things, maybe that will turn people off. But, again, I don't think this is about, like, whether or not people – will be turned off by Trump. To Jenk's point, not to both sides this, but like to Jenk's point, um, this is all about Biden. Uh, it's going to come down to can Biden get out enough people to win? Because, you know, the people abandoning Biden, they're not going for Donald Trump. They're abandoning Biden because he's supporting a genocide. So the question is, can he, can he increase turnout? And at this point in time, all data says probably not. So that's, I think, that's the main issue. These two guys standing there, there'll be no Barack Obama to hold Joe Biden's hand and guide him to safety. He's going to be exposed on live national television for however long it is. Okay, I think that he's hyping up the debate way, way, way too much. I think the debate will largely be inconsequential. I don't know. We'll find out next week. But look, I thought that Biden would faceplant during the debate with Bernie Sanders. He crushed Bernie Sanders in the primary when it was that one on one debate. He crushed him. Part of that was Bernie just wasn't willing to take the gloves off and he was doing the NPC talking point of Joe Biden is my friend. And another part of it is that Biden, you know, he was having a good day. He was having a real good day. Um, maybe they crushed up some Adderall and put it in his fucking coffee. I don't know, but he was on some. But, you know, with cognitive decline and senility, you're going to have good days and bad days. And Biden keeps getting lucky. He keeps Mr. Magooing himself into a situation where it's like, Oh, today's a great day, and it's also the debate. What a coincidence. He's going to get a question. Donald Trump's energy. Let me answer the question and, for uh, you. Uh, Brian, retor- if and- he's so diabolical, why is he ahead in the polls in most of the swing states? I agree the with The polls right now are... Regi- That's... Okay. First of all, we're talking about America. Americans voted for Ronald Reagan twice. They voted for uh, George W. Bush. They voted for Trump once. Hillary Clinton won the primary... <laughs> We're talking about a population that is extremely brainwashed by propaganda. Fox News is painting an alternate reality. It's not that, like, Americans are gravitating towards Trump. The same people who supported Trump for the most part in 2020 and 2016 are still supporting him. It's that not as much people are supporting Biden. It's less about Trump and more about Biden. And this isn't unique to this election. This is every election. It's always going to be... Uh, whether or not the Democrat can sufficiently get out the votes. If the Democrat does not mobilize enough voters, the Democrat loses. If the Democrat does mobilize voters, uh, they win. Not always, though. Like, there's instances like Stacey Abrams. She came close. She mobilized a lot of people in Georgia. She still lost. But that's the strategy right there that you have to go with. You can argue that her laying the groundwork uh, in mobilizing voters is what led to Biden winning back Georgia and turning it blue, at least temporarily. Um, so it's going to be about voter mobilization. I, I don't think there's many people that's like on the fence between Biden and Trump making that decision. I think for the most part, everyone's already decided. We know who these two dickheads are. They're both terrible. So the question is, who's going to actually be there on Election Day? Who's going to show up to the polls? That's what this is about. Look, Piers, the, the, what, what's happening right now in the polls in, in what is it, uh, in June 
uh, before the election is not indicative of what's going to happen. You, we all know that a lot can change in, in a few months. Look at what happened in the beginning of January 2020 to the beginning of February 2020. A lot can change in a few months. All right. People are going to be reminded of exactly who Donald Trump is, it's never why happened. they came together, why, why 81 million Americans came together in 2020 to make sure that he didn't take the presidency okay. and that was that was before he incited an insurrection on january All 6th right. that was that before may... 41 41 of his 44 cabinet officials uh, and closest advisors opted not to not to uh, endorse him in this upcoming election donald trump hasn't gotten better he's gotten worse the republican party hasn't gotten better it's gotten worse we see this in election after election okay. when people actually cast their ballots versus just the polls when people are actually going to the polls and casting ballots we we, we constantly see a different different story being told than the one that we hear from the media over and over and over on repeat. I think that's fair. Democrats are overperforming polls. I think that's largely uh, due to blowback from uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned. But the question is, how much? Because Biden is down in every single swing state. He has to overperform in every single swing state. It's just, it's a lot. Like, this is a Sisyphusian task to push Biden's old decrepit ass up that fucking hill and it just seems like it's it's an insurmountable task right but maybe maybe brian tyler cohen is right maybe he'll get lucky again i hope he's right we've just seen you know we've watched tommy loren smirk this whole time she gets the last word here uh tommy's verdict on what will happen come election day uh i'm assuming she's gonna say trump's gonna win right because she can never be honest she has to cheerlead her team no matter what let's hear it do you think Biden will be the guy that ends up fighting the election? Or do you agree with my sense, which is this, this debate could just throw everything up? Yeah, you know, and I agree that the reason this debate is so early is because Democrats need time. If he completely bombs, which mm -hmm. I expect he will, the Democrats need time to execute their swap out plan, which I've contended they're going to do for the last two years. I mean, Please. there is no doubt in my mind that there will. This is on, oh on, shit! This is the one time I'm like, oh, I hope Tommy Loren is right. I don't think that's going to happen though. Election day. She should hope that that's not going to happen if you want Trump to win, because I think that you put any other Democrat against Trump, uh, almost any other Democrat up against Trump. I think that Democrat wins. You put Gretchen Whitmer up against Trump, Gretchen Whitmer wins. Like, pick a Democratic governor. They'll do better. Any establishment Democrat, a progressive Democrat will especially do good, but they would never do that. But like, throw up Gavin Newsom, he'll do better than Trump. It, like, Biden is so unpopular, you know? I think it's either going to happen at the convention or shortly thereafter. Joe Biden will finally be convinced that he must step down because he's simply not even able to stand at that point. Oh, and I think they're going to swap he's him out. It might be Whitmer. Shit. I still think it's going to be Gavin Newsom. But I think that if it is Joe Biden, Donald Trump runs away with this election. But I'm a realist. If it's not Joe Biden, I agree that it's going to be much more challenging in the election because the Democrats are so good at the process. So I think it's going to be more challenging if Joe well, I actually agree with Tommy Loren, although if she's saying Democrats are so much good at the process, like, what does that mean? That's a little bit sussy. Like, do you mean, like, they're good at stealing it? Because that's ironic coming from the side that likes to do a lot of voter suppression. And Democrats do that shit, too, especially in the primaries to their own voters. But, like, come on. I don't know if that's what she's saying, but it's Tommy Loren. Is she a big election truther? I genuinely don't know. But for the most part, look, I think she's right. If Democrats replace Biden, they have a better chance. But Biden is a stubborn motherfucker, and he's not... I don't think he's going to step down. I think that ship has sailed. It's Biden and Trump, okay? Like, you can tell yourself that it's going to happen, but I think that's copium. Joe isn't the nominee on the Democrat side, but I still think that Donald Trump, given everything we're seeing in our country, especially that wide open southern border that's literally killing Americans, I do believe... Wide open southern border. He literally just signed an executive order to illegally deny asylum. Really, Tommy? Really? Like, you were doing... I'm not going to say you're doing so good. But you were at least being honest. And now you're like, oh, no, he has an open border. Shut the fuck up. I love how there's, like, this idea that Biden has an open border. And Republicans who say that will, like, share an article of, like, four immigrants apprehended for crossing the border... I can't believe that they've caught more people crossing the border. Man, it's almost like the border's not open and they're not letting people cross.
It's so stupid. I believe Donald Trump's going to win either way, but it's much easier against Joe. So if you guys want to keep pretending he's A-OK, -okay, Brian, I'm right there with you. Let's go with that. Finally, we'll reach a point of complete consensus. Uh, thank you to all my panel. Brilliant debate. Thank you very much indeed. Mm, thank you, Pierce. What do the comments say? Oh my God, listening to Jenk is the fastest way to become a Trump supporter. Jenk has so much hatred in his demeanor. Holy shit. I'm just here reminding everyone that Jenk thought he could be the next U.S. president. Damn. Well, look, I thought that Jenk actually did a good job. He made some great points and held his own, and they're like, fuck this guy. God damn. The internet is ruthless, but there you have it. Uh, I don't think Biden is going to be replaced. Um, I think he should be replaced, but it's not going to happen. I, I would be very happy to be wrong, but it's not going to happen. It's, it's Biden or Trump, and uh, we're rolling the dice. So... Uh, yeah, ride or die, baby. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.